Okay, this is Vance uh, with FiscalRangers.com here with uh, the Lake County uh, tax collector David Jordan and Thanks. we're here to talk about the category of what are called PACE loans for residential homeowners. Uh, we have done a separate one on commercial so this is not the commercial one which we thought maybe was okay because the risks and the sophistication of the uh, developers that were involved but this one we're going to talk about just strictly residential and some of the perceived risks or issues that uh, uh, Mr. Jordan sees uh, and we'll go with that. Right. So uh, hey, maybe you can give me a background. You're, you're the elected constitutional officer here and you uh, have just been exposed to these because in Lake County we really haven't had any wave of residential PACE loans yet. Uh, and maybe you could explain what a PACE loan is, uh, just a short version of it, and then, because I'm, put, I'm putting together a white paper that's going to be longer with the details and links. And then, um, and then the background about how, because you saw it from the beginning when it kind of rolled out to uh, the state, so if you can do that. Well, I guess first off, obviously, one of the things in the law that has come about after the constitutional amendment that allowed for storm hardening and um, other energy efficiency improvements to a residential home wouldn't be put on your tax bill, which was a sound uh, policy right. that the, elect, the citizens of Florida adopted that. So that's where somebody might buy a solar uh, roof system for $30,000 but it would not be added to the valuation of the property Correct. for tax purposes by the tax, I mean the property appraiser. And so therefore uh, the tax collector wouldn't be collecting on that portion of the total value of the home. Right, and then from there um, laws were written and that's kind of where the birth of PACE came from in Florida. Um, I think, I look at it as like a kind of a nose, the camel's nose under, under the tent. On a residential side, like we're talking about. And from there, all these, the different laws that were available created these other local government entity that then becomes like a lending um, arm um, of a local government form. And then they go around and make arrangements with other local government bodies, cities, counties, and say, would you like to get into an interlocal agreement with us? Because we've now become a government entity. Mm -hmm. And that they're really lending money to a property owner. And then because they're statutorily in the Supreme Court in Florida is determined a governmental entity, they can avail themselves of using me or any tax collector in Florida as their collection agency for these funds that are also certified through circuit court to be like a tax-free or like a government bond type deal. So um, we were, now we have this entity that's been legally recognized and then these entities, these districts can go and contract with private companies to then market this idea. Mm -hmm. and so they go around knocking on commission doors and council doors and whatnot because it is the um, call of the local governing body of a municipality or a county to decide whether they want to avail themselves of an interlocal agreement with this other entity, PACE. If um, they choose to do it, that puts the tax collector in a position basically that you have to enter an agreement to collect this. And as you know, that property, put it on your property tax bill means that the entirety of the bill has to be paid. There is no portional payments unless you're... And that's, our, that's an annual yes. bill, right? In what it is, it's, it's you're defeasing the debt. Um, typically, as you know, Vance, that... Let's, let's back up. Traditionally, how this would go right now in Lake County outside, it would be you go to United Southern Bank, you go to Truist, or you go to whomever, and you apply for credit to have a loan that um, to, put, to do these improvements. By whatever commercial means out there, residential means would be, excuse me, would be available to someone to borrow money. So, and with that, those, those, those liens would be secondary to taxes, where when this outfit gets into lending the constituent money, you then become a statutory priority lien. You're, 
it is as surely going to be collected as the first tax dime for the county commission. So it's lumped in it. So then you go get the solar panel, you put them on your roof, or you put new windows in, or whatever. And then you decide to borrow money from this government entity, and then they have an amortization. I don't know what their arrangements in detail are, but they're very similar to any kind of mortgage like loan setting. There's origin fees, origination fees, et cetera, et cetera. And they, they detail these all out. So they have a closing, la, 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 here's your money, and they have approved contractors to do this stuff. They do that, and then it will show up on your tax bill. Most people's homes have mortgages and their their uh, escrow, and they're part of their monthly payments. So what would happen right off the bat is you're going to get a notice once the next cycle goes through from your lender saying, oh, we didn't have enough money in the bank because we were amortized on a lower number. Now there's a catch-up and it's a go forward. So someone's house payment may be $1,200. Um, a year's gotten by them. There's a $200 equ equating to a $200 a month payment. Now you're at 200 catch up and 200 going forward for the next year. So for the next year, you're $1,600. Okay? So now it could get into a point where you, you're really in outside the their debt to ratio issues with sound financial planning for somebody. Um, so, anyhow, they, they move on and then, or you own the place uh, outright because that's what you put your life savings into and then you come on hard times or whatever the financial situation is. We're in one now, globally, right? And you have, there is no remedy in taxes other than the due process of law. Everybody's treated the same. You can't ask for a refinance or add it to the balloon payment and put off. Uh, forbearance, for instance. Not, 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 the to do that. They, there's a provision in the statute that allows def, de, to defer taxes. And it's really interesting because it takes up most of the tax collection statutes. And it's about two parcels in Lake County. And it's on that yeah. ratio throughout the state. But all it does, it defers at an enormous interest rate. And it's, it's just put off to another date for someone else to wind up with that. It's not really, that's not a good solution either. So anyhow, if you if you get in a point where you can't pay it, there is there is no legal ability for me to accept all your taxes except for the pace. They're just like um, if a Lake County Fire Rescue is on here for special assessment, we have to collect it. I have no option, or I'd take it out of office, quite frankly. I wouldn't be doing my job. So that's where the danger is. The other part is that you have someone that goes and has this, you know, like you use the solar panels, that's a very invasive construction, electrical, I mean, that's just not replacing a, a sink in the kitchen and a garbage disposal. So I just intuitively it tells me there are things that could potentially go wrong with it. And you're dealing with that contractor, but you're in a pay for it through the government mode. Let me just okay. break in here. Uh, separately on FiscalRangers.com, I have created a page where I investigated solar uh, roofing plans and all of this, all of the scams that are going on. Uh, they come out of California and they roll over to Florida. There's a lot of risk there. For instance, you spend thirty thousand dollars, put all these solar panels on your roof, and you get uh, batteries to collect the energy and so forth, and then. Three years later, your roof leaks. Well, then you're going to have to spend $3,000 to have the panels removed, plus the cost of a new roof, and then put the panels back on. And uh, there's no guarantee that you're even warned about that. And so that, that's the kind of thing that could happen that could cause problems with it, whether or not you use PACE financing. Right. And, and then, so with that, I, I'm trying to, like, set a scenario that's I think is realistic. There's what you just said, but a person that's not as familiar with all the details of government operation that are all laid out in laws you're very familiar with, mm -hmm. and joined in this, and the, I guess you'd say the common sense is I pay the county commission from my solid waste to pick up my garbage, I pay for the fire department. If something goes wrong with either one of those, I call my commissioner, right? Mm -hmm. Or the, the director of that department. So I think it'd be a constituent, a property owner, would think, well, they're collecting this on the tax bill that Jordan sends out, the same place they're collecting. It would be right next to the fire. Now think about that. 
So it'd be natural to say, hey, I, I need to call my county commissioner or call the department. And they're mm -hmm. going to be put in a position to go, hey, sorry about your luck. I mean, obviously, they say it nicer than that. But there's nothing, there's no remedy for government. Now, now there's all the uh, Better Business Bureau, different consumer advocate mm -hmm. things, but you know how that goes. That's, that's not always yeah. a quick resolution. There's actually a lot of complaints about Pace Sorry. Residential on Better Business Bureau sites. Mm -hmm. I found them. Okay. Well, it just, and I guess intuitively to me, um, about how local government in Florida is structured, it's very sound. It has, everything has its warts, its shortcomings. But to then kind of morph it into something that brings into this oddity that is not part of, in my opinion, what local government does. I'm part of that, um, and I say that within my box, constitutional bounds, and respecting the uh, folks elected to make these decisions in different jurisdictions, but I feel a conviction to sit with you and explain some of this stuff for twofold. One, I report to those same constituents, my fellow elected officials that would make these decisions, and the other is that none of us can know everything. So it's a way to, through you, help share this information to get it to city and county commissioners that uh, might be greeted with this reasoning. On its surface, as you know, it sounds really good. It sounds awesome. Um, you hear the sad story um, for different things, but it's really not a wise arena for government to be in in this kind of structure of financing. I think it puts constituents in a way not immediately, but potentially at risk in the future. And it, and it doesn't go away because they don't pay their taxes and we do all the process over two years, la la la, and I send it over to Mr. Cooney's office. This, again, a separation issue, and he sells the property. The next owner that just got that property still has that debt, just like that fire assessment is still going to be on there the next year until it's defeased. Now, it's a separate line item on the uh, tax bill. It'd it? be non-avalorum, because oh, you've got a tax bill, when you get it, the top part's avalorum, and below the line, we call it, is the, it's not a tax, it's an assessment, yeah. and you get a benefit for it, like you get the firemen to come help you out, or firefighters, and you get the garbage taken away from your home. Pace, you're paying a loan off, yeah. and I become a collector for someone that's interested in letting a bunch of money to this entity, which I imagine is a, there's a financial gain in that for somebody, right? I mean, why would you yeah. lend your money to someone? Now, I, during our previous conversations, when we were talking about commercial PACE programs, I talked to some of the senior people in, that were representing that pitch to the city of Lady Lake, and they are all actually pretty open and helpful. And uh, they pointed out that uh, on the residential side that the problem is you can have a fly-by-night contractor and it isn't the PACE financing itself so much for if you're talking about dealing with quality of the project. A fly-by-night contractor can come in and they can build something and put it in whether it's an air conditioning system or um, a solar panel system or all Air new windows system yeah all new windows, windows doors yeah anything that quote is environmental and green that is supposed to save energy in uh, storm hardening in storm hardening yeah and so the uh, so they'll sell these well one is uh, some of these guys are overpricing it and uh, people don't know but they're they're enticing people by saying one no credit check is required because it's all based upon the equity in the property, not the person's credit. Okay? And then secondly, they'll say no money down. And, well, hey, that's a no-brainer. I need a new roof, uh, you know, and uh, maybe with solar panels. And they got such a deal here, uh, and it's one, it's maybe 6% or something. It's, it's a lower percentage rate. And... Uh, the reason it's a lower percentage rate is because the, the, the financiers that provide the money have much more confidence that he's going to collect that money whether the house you know is sold or not. Uh, and it'll always be collected and uh, they don't have to go through like somebody that's going through bankruptcy to get out of paying that debt. And as so, the saying goes, sure as death. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it's, it's a way of putting it on there and 
if it's a bad contractor, then the homeowner three years later, you know, like I said, has a problem with the panels supposed to last 30 years, so the loan is 30 years, and then uh, they fail. Uh, or they promise that the uh, utility company will give them a rebate, money back because of power that they save and transfer or send back, they save from the solar panels and they send back to the power company. And uh, then the utility decides not to do that anymore, and all of a sudden you lose that income stream. And so there's all these things that can crop up. Um, and what the issue then is that they're, you're still going to have to collect it if the guy says, I'm not going to pay that, and they just walk away from the house because maybe we've gone through a recession and they're underwater anyway. Right. Okay. Well, and, the, and the taxes. Um are, I don't ever like the words always and ever, but it's not likely taxes owed over a two-year period, which is the trigger for a tax deed application to go, is ever going to exceed what the value of the property is. It'd be a, I don't know, what the, there's a word, it's almost yeah. desert-like um, terrain in Lake County yeah. at that point, like a nuclear bomb went off, but so... What I'm getting at is it's going to sell for enough to get us their taxes back and to pay the thing. And someone, it'd be marketable for someone to want to buy that home with the broken whatever on it for $40,000. And it used to be worth 200000 and now they can fix it up and sell it for hundred. You know, yeah. what have we been through that here, through the nation. So it's there's so many moving parts in it. And there's, it's a lot of weird things about it. And this is where the danger of trying to share information and and getting into details when you know it well, like as you research things, you have a, a skill of putting it together succinctly, and that's a challenge for me because I look at all the moving parts in this thing, and it alarms me. That's just the best yeah. way I can sum it up because you've got here's this government entity that's acting like it's doing a special assessment. So if if a local government, say the Tiver city of Tiveries, wanted to put the fire department cost on the on the tax bill, then put it on non avalon they, that's allowable for them. But there are very rigid, as you know, steps they have to take. They have to do a first-class mailing. They have to have certain hearings. They've got to have a, a, study. a study done, correct, yeah. to show that it's proportioned right. It's very rigorous, and for good reason, and it should be that way. So, and they got to advertise in a local newspaper. Well, this is the same model they're using through law. And it's just bizarre to, to put an ad in every pub. Uh, publication general circulation in the state of Florida. That's not an exaggeration. You, you've seen it. Have you seen been it? doing that? I've no, they did it. It's because if you look at well, the get the paper in a while. You know, well, most people stop. Well, there's a subscribing. So, so like if go back to Tavares, say they put it in the commercial or they put it in. The, oh, for their. For they say for, this make believe okay. scenario I'm talking about, which which is very allowable under law. They would have to do that. That's one of the components. They have to put that public advertisement out there. So I'm just illustrating the bizarreness of this, how this got created. That So what they did is they did an advertisement in every, I shouldn't say every, it seems like every newspaper of general circulation in Florida so they could say, check box, we've done that. Yeah. Even though they haven't got approved for a city or county in that jurisdiction to do it. And that's the cart before the horse deal because as you know, through watching these non alarms, you can't put an advertisement in the paper of City of Tavares or Leesburg or Lake County Commission and say, we might do this. Yeah. No, it's we're, we intend to consider doing this and we're going to have the hearing on this date and not adopt. So that's anecdotal, but it's, it's, it's all these parts of it and it's DNA that it, I'm not in the legislature. I respect their, what they do. I respect my fellow constitutionals and legislative bodies. But my opinion, and, and being around this for so long, is in, in local government, and very proud of local government structure in Florida, this is, this is a mutation of the DNA. That, that's how I would put it. Is it legally wrong? No. Florida Supreme Court said it's not. You've found that. But it's just something in it from a policy standpoint. Bad news. And if... And the old question go, my mom has a house in Southern Shores, and you and I talked about this. And so what would I suggest to my mother? Run, Forrest, run. Do, do, not, do yeah. not seek the treasure, whatever you want to say, because 
it's borrowing trouble you don't need. If you need new windows in your house, there are better ways of going about that. And, and, and taking a, encumbering your homestead, and homestead won't save you from this either. It just sells the house at a higher price, not a market price, just a higher price. So um, I've talked with different folks with Pace on the residential side. Like you said, they're very forthcoming. They're very smart folks, and I, and I mean that genuinely. As you yeah. know, well-read, um, and they believe in what they're doing, and I understand from their perspective, but I've not met too many of them that have a real handle on local government and its intended duties and responsibilities from the framers of our state and how it's gone in perpetuity very well, again, with its shortcomings at times. But in the big picture, it's, it's not horrible. It's far better than D.C. Okay, um, one of the examples that I saw one of them, one of the PACE uh, proponents uh, say was that, uh, okay, once a city approves it, um, and Mount Dora has approved both commercial and residential. Uh, I did look that up on, in their minutes. And uh, they actually are now on the board of one of the uh, district, uh, one of the groups that's involved in it. Uh, and the, um, but when you have a city approve this, the, then immediately it's like a gold rush. The, uh, anybody, because there are multiple companies question. that offer PACE yeah. financing, right. they'll all fan out to talk to all the developers and contractors mm -hmm. and say, here's what you now can do, and if you get this loan through us, and it'll help enable a lower cost project. Uh, the, and as I mentioned earlier, it may not necessarily be a lower cost project. It could be an overpriced project, but it's sold on the benefit that, oh, no credit check. So you're selling it to people without verifying they have the ability to pay. And that is one thing that's come out of my discussions is that they don't check to make sure the person has the ability to pay. Now, then I found out that there are four what they call districts, PACE districts in Florida. Each of them are like independent entities that go out and uh, they deal with these different contractors. And the, the one that I was talking to, he, he talked quite a bit about the safeguards that they had and the quality control to make sure they didn't have bad contractors. Okay? But he said that the two big companies they had that would go out and probably were traveling groups that went around and did that kind of work, that they uh, both left him because he put in rules that they didn't want to follow. And the other three, we don't know. So any, anybody that's contacted by those four districts, well, the one now is only doing commercial. Okay. The other three, though, and I haven't talked to them yet, but they probably are all doing residential. And so they're going out, and as soon as a city approves it, or a county, they go out to these developers, they sign them up to offer that financing as an alternative to regular types of, you know, construction loans or uh, remodeling loans and so forth, and usually lower interest and no credit check. And so they, they reel people in, and uh, that's a, if you do a search on Google, um, PACE lawsuits, you'll find a huge number of them. And one of the big companies that was here originally had 80% of the market is Y-Green. And they've that's, been sued that's all over that. California and here for some of their business practices. And I don't know the situation now, but I think they still are one of the, the active groups selling it. So depending on which group sells it to you, they may or may not have standards for the quality of the work that's done or a fair pricing. And so then the person signs up for it and I keep thinking of some of these people I've met uh, that are retired elderly people and typically you could have a spouse that does not ever really handle finances. They have a surviving spouse there you go. and they make a decision, oh this is so great, he's such a nice young man, I'm going to get air conditioning to replace my inefficient air conditioning 
and it's no money down and they don't know how to calculate whether they have the ability to pay that loan and they're on the property taxes yep. and they don't realize it's a lien. That's one thing you should go out and you read. A lot of these people didn't even realize it's it was a, a lien. It's a, stash, it's a priority statutory government yeah. lien. Yeah. Nothing trumps that. Not so, even a mortgage. Yeah. So it means that the, the, the money that he's collecting for these PACE loans has priority to take out of whatever remains when the house is sold. That's right. And so uh, it's kind of a real risky situation to me. And remember what we talked about, the difference of a foreclosure in a private sector going yeah. through five less pendants and go through a circuit court because of Florida's strong property rights. It has to go before a circuit judge. All the I's have to be dotted, all the T's. There's plenty of time for the for, lender that's to That's for a standard a foreclosure. Yes, thank you. Standard, like someone just okay. is foreclosing on yeah. their traditional deal. There's a whole thorough process that's scrutinized and every penny's counted for. Mm -hmm. Every little letter of the contract that they signed and all that stuff. And there's an opportunity to object to that. And in the course of a tax deed sale ultimately happening, Yes, a person does have standing to go into a circuit court, but that would be a, a fool's errand, quite frankly, because you're not going to change that court. It's it's a it's a tried and true system that's been around for eons, and it's been court tested. Um, it's it's a, a uniform method of collection, mm -hmm. so that's not stopping. And, and while all these lawsuits are going and all that stuff, it doesn't matter. It just we go along collecting the taxes. And doing whatever the remedy is that when I took oath office, I said I would uphold. Da, 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 this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So um, Mike Fasano, who's uh, my counterpart, in Pasco County. I think you commented. Yeah, on that, I found an article where he, he was quoted. He's been one of the only. I think when he was a former senator, okay. and um, not long ago, and Rick Scott appointed him to, when Mike Olson passed away, who was a, a really sharp um, tax collector in Pasco. And Mr. Fasano is even taking office to another level. Um, he has a, I have a great deal of respect for his um, leadership there and um, ministerial um, responsibilities and how he carries them out. But he, um, I spoke with him a while back when this first came up when Tom Lackey and I were over with uh, Commissioner Roba. Um, Going to get his take on it for, for the same reason you did. Yeah. And he has a very clear way of putting it on. And, um, is a, is very concerned for the residential side of it and concerned for the constituents. And Pasco County has an enormous elderly population, as you pointed out in your, your example. Mm -hmm. So um, he's he's very outspoken about it. And the former tax collector in Osceola County was, when this first popped its head up, she was one of the first. Uh, Patsy, um, she was, Hefner, she was all over it and knew the details inside and out and basically pleading with the Osceola County Commission to not go down that road. Now, end of the day, um, if you know, Mount Dora signs off on it, and here comes that entity, I get a standard collection agreement together from my council, and I hand it to them, they sign it, and I start collecting it. Have you received any notice on that? Um, to my, not to my knowledge, in Mount Dora. Because it was like in June. And I pulled up the resolution okay. and read it. There's several we've got going on right now. Okay. There aren't just pace. There's different fire ones changing. So, okay. um, and we're working on probably ten right now. All right. Variety. But I know the the Leesburg commercial ones are done. So, They're completed like, work. I don't know. Just, just done in their communication okay. with us. Okay. Um, and what we we um and it. And also, they have to follow the same rules as the fire, the solid waste, or whatever. Where in September fifteenth, they have to have a certain file formatted a certain way. There, there are like five points that I have the authority to say. If you don't meet one of these five points, like a, I have to have a resolution from the chair of that governmental entity. Um, it has to be in a certain format. It has to be by a certain deadline to get on the tax bill. And if you don't do one of these five things, you're not on the tax bill. It's the only thing that would stop it from getting on there. What did you say, entity? Are you talking about the city? No, in this case, see, it's a separate is, entity that they the right. state entity. Correct. Okay. The state, or as yeah. you said, these districts that spur off from it. And I've talked to one of the guys from there. Uh oh, it's China watching, already. She's watching my tongue. It's not midnight. <laughs> I won't turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> it's my head. Okay, so but, now 
how about any of the things on here? I just wanted to see local government benefits. Uh, the benefit. We talked about before. You break even, or that you don't lose anything if you have to process these for collection, right? No, sir. So the taxpayer isn't shorted. It's just the issue is that the homeowner may have problems. Right, and then the government, your local government elected official, um, is not your resolution. You chose this, um, yeah. and again, to our political position and philosophy, if you will, is personal yeah. responsibility. So I'm, again, I'm reluctant. To stick my nose in someone else's business, yeah. this true republic loving person like our country, I believe you should go do what you want to go do. But I also know that there's responsibility in cautioning people and and with such complex creations like this, the gyrations, my word, probably not a good one, but to get to where this thing can exist in its legal form. If 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 a county commissioner group were to try to perform some convoluted scheme like this, it, it would set up all kinds of red flags and people would be out of their mind. Um, but it's so complex and so f granular and each part goes together. In the end of the day, they're a, they a legitimate, bona fide, local governmental entity, just like the city of Mount Dora. So it's, no, it's just like if Tavares and Mount Dora got together and said, hey, let's do a mutual, let's do an interlocal agreement with yeah. fire trucks going to calls. That's allowable under the law. Actually, that's what they do, and in the resolution, it actually names three or four right. cities that are Correct. part of the board or St. Cloud or Kissimmee yeah. or something in Flagler yeah. County, yeah. and they're the parents of this yeah. thing that first began, and then the offshoots to your point of the districts. Mm -hmm. um, and there's that's a great piece of law that's worked all through the state to solve all kinds of issues more economically for government entities with a common goal. To do something together, like Lake and Sumter had an ambulance service at one time until they got to where they are today. So it provides different remedies, but that's where this took advantage of that scenario and then had other legislative changes made. And so here they are, they're, they're walking up technically as a governmental entity, walking up to Mount Ord, just for example, and saying, We're a government entity, we exist, we're bona fide, let's have an interlocal agreement and we can do this. Yeah. Then their local government, local government can come to me and say, collect this money. Yeah, my understanding is that's because the local government, like the city of Mount Dora, they're not the ones that the people can hold responsible for it because they're not. It's the that separate entity that right. is running the that's program. Right. And here's the here's the, the something I like to say, just to, for what it's worth. It's it bothers. I have a concern with things that sound really. Like, who can deny that we want to find some alternative method of um, energy? Of course, we'd all be for that. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want to storm harden a home? These are smart things to be looking at and try to accomplish. But just because they have the label on it doesn't mean it. it that's another topic. We're talking about financing this yeah. great idea. Is that, that's how yeah. I separate it. This is the money part of it, and this is the remedy for the money part. And you don't escape it because the idea didn't come through. And one of the things I understand, and I think it was uh, your friend from uh, Pasco County in one of the Miami Herald article, uh, was that there is no central agency that they can go to and complain. For instance, for mobile homes, they're governed by Chapter 723, and they have a complaint process. And if you are in a homeowner's association and you have a complaint, there is a process for that. Or a condominium association, yeah. same thing, yeah. right? But for this program, there is no central agency that you can file a complaint that has any authority to do anything. As ridiculous as this sounds, is like you pointed out the city and county that got together to make the original thing, and then they appoint their board members. Technically, that's your, that's your people you go make your beef with, yeah. who are not elected to that board, they're elected in jurisdictions in different parts of the state mm -hmm. and then wind up on that board and you're not an elector, so you have no impact on that. So it's yeah. really, again, I think a mutation, that's a nice word, I think, of a creating this governmental entity that has no splashback to the office holder. You know, if, if I don't do my job, there are people in Lake County hold me accountable for that. If I violate some law, the governor can take me out of office. There's a remedy to mm -hmm. these different things, as we've seen in different yeah. places. 
but to your point, I think that's it's another one of those things that, again, if you're the person considering to get one of these loans or something, you're probably not going to be concerned with these kind of things. Um, but if I was a city council member, it yeah. may not be all that it appears. It, it, it's, they'll, they'll say, it wasn't us, it was them, but then they turn around, but you approved it, it's in the minutes. <laughs> well, and the only thing you approved a right. process That's that it. enabled a contractor to offer a program that turned bad, right. and there's no there's no quality control over it. And doesn't and I think the expression is it puts me in a Pontius Pilate. Is that position? Is that am I using that right? I don't know. I'd have to. I mean, like I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I can't I, remember. I don't it. think. I don't think we should sell their their house because they yeah. made this bad decision. Yeah. But they're the authority, so I have to. I have yeah. to take them to their. To the gallows. Okay. Is there anything else uh, on that list, or that you want to share? Most of it is opinion for me. But it stimulates local job creation. Yeah. You know more. Hey, that's that that's a marketing. They throw yeah. that in. Improves property values. Yeah. Not to me. I drive by and see that stuff bolted on someone's roof. I'm driving on. Mm -hmm. I, I saw one put on. I won't say where. Um, and I looked at it. Had three tap shingles on the house, which are not typically used much anymore. Yeah, they're cheap. The cheap. But they're nice, to, and they're and they're twenty plus years old. Um, I drive by it regularly, going to my son's house, and I bet you, Mr. Lackey's seen it too. And I and I saw when a guy put it on there, and I just in my heart just ah, uh, because yeah, that looks nice and it's working right now, but that roof is not good for three to five more, and mm -hmm. and that debt is going to be on moving forward. Yeah. So and it, although it's not a pay steal, it's still. Anyhow, improves um, older building stock. By the idea, that's Storm on the commercial side, it's okay. from hardening and from making uh, more efficient uh, design criteria for, uh, say, dual pane windows, that sort of thing. Promotes renewable energy. Well, yeah. renewable energy already exists. That, what our goal is, that, what, what the world's trying to do is harness it. So I don't know how you. But the how problem you is that they don't follow through and say, even though it costs more. <laughs> yeah, it's called ROI too, right? Yeah. Um, and some of these other ones, like who's administering it? Why use the tax bill repayment? Well, I'll tell you why. Because there's a. I was corrected by one of these folks that it's not a hundred percent risk free. And so I said, well, I'll stand corrected. It's ninety nine point nine nine nine. Put a line over that last mm -hmm. line percent secure because I'd like someone to point out to me in Lake County where someone didn't pay their taxes and somewhere in anywhere between two and seven years the property wasn't sold mm -hmm. or a sheet to the county if they're yeah. on the list of lands you know the remedies so I find that real hard to believe and so why it's on the tax bill in my opinion is because they've they've taken on the likeness of a governmental entity to take on the likeness of a governmental entity you enjoy the th the characteristics and benefits of being a government entity. Sovereign immunity, maybe? I don't know. There's your one. Okay. So, anyhow, appreciate um, you really digging into this, Vance. This is a, this is something, it's a, it's a really a perfect example of here comes a good idea, or here comes something that, you know, on its outward appearances is very exciting, or it has some kind of hope in it, if you will. Um, but, as you know, with your background, it's digging into the details. It's ferreting out the facts, which I believe align with the truth. And so I, th I, I would caution elected officials, this, if you decide to do it, I will collect it. That's my job, and I respect the position. You won't see me meddling in their commission meetings unless I'm invited to be there for reasons like I'm okay. in Leesburg. That's yeah. not my place to step into. There's no more than them have an influence in how I go about the uniform method of mm -hmm. collection, and that's keeping those boundaries. Um, and to, to, to let the public know that, to alert them to it, and if that's what they choose to do, that's what their elected officials choose to do, then I'm going to carry out my job. But I'm here, and I want to just say, please be careful. I, I, I would highly discourage it, and I'm not really concerned what I'd say about it, because remember, it's a governmental entity, and, and it, you can pretty much pick about any elected official or board appointed person in government apart. It's not liable and it's not slander when you question my work as a tax collector as your local official, right? So uh, if you're going to take on that likeness, you take on all the rest of it. You take on the public records. You take on the sunshine laws. 
and that's the way it should be. So that's where you come in the picture, I mean, in particular you, because of your diligence of wanting to dig into these things and having the knowledge and knowing where to go find information. And I would encourage other people to take on that disposition, that mentality of don't just take stuff at its face value. Have someone show you why it is like it is. You know, we don't have reporters, TV stations covering the news no. anymore and the government. And nobody's covering this. No, thing. it's it's there's a, there's several things. I mean, did you want these? Yes, I do. I, I don't have either one of them. Okay, but thank you, Vance. And.